Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. This is gonna be a controversial one, but listen up. Photo is better than video. Now, before you get too mad, let me let me explain my thoughts behind this and kind of frame this in the context of traveling. While you are out traveling, what is better to focus your efforts on? To capture the memories of your trip, should you be focused on photo or video? Which has a greater return for your efforts? We just got back from a trip to Maui with my wife and her family, and I shot the X106 while I was out there testing this thing out. Yes, I will be putting out a review video on this camera, but I, I did something that I haven't done in a long time, and that was that during the entire trip, I primarily focused on photo over video. And the real wild bit of this is that I've been a professional photographer for 15 years, but for like probably the last five or six years, maybe even more, when we go out on trips, I was always thinking like, oh, I wanna make this epic travel video that I've seen online. And I would focus most of my efforts during a trip on shooting video, trying to, to capture enough coverage to where when I went back and I was chopping this thing up, I could make like some epic video that captured our trip. And don't get me wrong, I have loved having those videos of our trips, but now, now focusing an entire trip primarily on photo over video, I think it's better. Like I think it's actually significantly better than spending your time on video. And I'm not sure why it's taking me so long to realize this because in my career as a photographer, I mainly focus on weddings. And if you are in that industry or you've been married before, you'll know that every couple that gets married hires a wedding photographer. Not every couple hires a wedding videographer. And if they do, it's definitely a lower priority than like getting a great photographer. So we know instinctually that photos capture memories in a better way than videos do somehow, or that we prioritize photos over videos. And and somehow for my, my travels, I'm just now re-realizing this. Okay, so why is that? And how does this translate to you capturing your, your vacation memories? First to the why or, or the whys. The ones that I can come up with and you guys can throw some more in the comments what you think, but photos, Photos are inherently more nostalgic. It's a freeze frame of a moment. Like when you look at a photo, you get drawn in immediately to it. You get wrapped back into that memory. You see something and you go, oh, it's almost like a jumping off point for a bunch of other memories and emotions around, around that moment and around that time in your life. Like everyone that sees old photos goes like, oh, that brings me back. Like I remember, I remember being there. And when you look at a photo, like it's, yeah, just that freeze frame of a moment, there's something very nostalgic about that. But the next thing I thought of was that photos are so much more accessible. Like we we actually access photos more often than we access old videos. And that's why I think that for weddings, for you're, you're having a baby, all the different kind of milestones in life, we prioritize photos because they're easily accessible to just jump back to quickly. You can flip through them easier. You can send them to your friends and family easier. They're just easy, you hang them on the wall. You can't hang a video on the wall. They're more accessible than, than accessing a video, sitting down and watching an old 10 minute video. In general, phot photos are just more, more easily accessible. Now, how does this translate into you going out and capturing your vacation memories? I have three pretty solid tips, three things that I think I did really well on this trip and I think would help you on your future trips. But first, let me thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace, because Squarespace has helped me with my photography business for over 10 years now. Well before they ever supported this channel, I was a Squarespace user. Way back in the day, I started my website on Squarespace because I didn't know how to build a website. I was a photographer and didn't know how to make a website, but I knew I needed a website. And with Squarespace, it was incredibly easy to make a website that, that would be quite impressive to my clients. And when I say easy, I'm talking about 10 years ago, it was easy. Now, with their Fluid Engine design system, all the new features that they've brought into Squarespace, they've kind of made it even easier. All you have to do is go to the first thing in the description, shoot over to squarespace.com and sign up for a totally free trial. You go in there, you download one of their professionally designed templates, which just looks amazing already. Like find the one that you look at and you go, I kind of wish my website looked like that website. Click on it, swap in your info for their info, your photos for their photos, and you already have a very dope website, but then you can use their Fluid Engine design system and customize it exactly to your business or whatever side project you're working on. And the best part about it is that because you're finding Squarespace through this video, you will save 10% on checkout by using code David Manning. Thank you for using that code and thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Okay, on to the three tips that, that I really focused in on to capture 
through my vacation through photos and the X106. You can use any camera, but this is just what I used. Okay, number one is 80-20. You should spend 80% of your time focused on photography and 20% focused on video. I would even push that to probably 90-10. On this trip, for sure, I was much more 90-10, but I, I still really enjoy having quick clips of my kids. I like to hear the waves and my kids laughing. Like I want those memories. I just don't want to film everything video, have very little photos, and then all I end up with at the end of a trip is like a 10 minute cool to music chopped up video that is really cool and I like it. But trust me, the 600 final photos that I came back with from this thing, they're gonna pop up in my life more. They're gonna be a part of my life much more than that one video that, that we'll rarely go back and watch. If any of you are married, tell me how many times you've looked at your wedding photos versus how many times you've looked at your wedding video. We love our wedding video, but it's probably been like four years since we've watched our wedding video. And then when I wanted to capture a video, I was just using my phone or the Pocket 3. Like these were my main two video cameras that I was using and I would honestly say I probably use my iPhone the most. And then during the actual travel portion, I was using the Ace Pro the most. Like having this getting it on and off the plane, like just being able to stuff this in my bag, pull it out, shoot a couple of clips, stuff it back in my bag. It's easier and better than my phone because my phone, one, I don't want to kill the battery on this thing because we're traveling so I need my phone for other things. And this thing uh, just performed awesome. Swimming with turtles with this thing was amazing. Might make a whole video just on that. All right, number one, 80-20 photo to video. Number two is have a dedicated camera that is just for photo. For so long, where's that? There you are. I've brought the Sony a7 IV pretty much everywhere I've gone because it's a hybrid camera. Like this is the ultimate hybrid camera. So I would shoot photos with it and then I would flip it to video, try to shoot video clips, try to flip it back. What I ended up doing was basically leaving it in video mode and hardly ever shooting photos because going back and forth was kind of a pain in the butt. If I had ND filters on there, if I was using a mist filter, anything that I was doing for video, like the camera was just set up for video. So flipping it to photo mode and then having to flip back quickly to video mode, kind of a pain in the butt. And for this trip, having this camera where I never shot video with it, I just kept it in photo mode. It was always ready to go, hanging on my hip. So I could just pull it up and go click, 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 click was super dope and very helpful. If this video has convinced you that photos are a better way to capture your memories than video, I promise you having a single camera that is dedicated to photography and you're not trying to switch back and forth is the best way to capture the most photos possible. And then having other cameras to again, just kind of capture those quick clips. You can look back and hear your kids laughing, see them running around. But again, man, a photo of my kid running around and like that frozen moment where they're like, ah, and just pure joy versus that video. Again, the photo beats it for me. So number one, focus your time 80% on photo, 20% on video. Number two, have a dedicated camera for photo. And number three is perfection is the enemy of done. This is a, a crazy thing that I did also is that I shot this camera with all of its film simulations and I kind of dialed one in that I really liked. I shot this entire trip JPEG. That might not be a big deal to any of you, but since I got my first Canon 5D like 15 years ago, I have not shot a JPEG image except on my phone. I would bring my camera on trips, on family birthday parties, just like anywhere that I brought my camera to take photos, I was always shooting raw. And what that means is you just have larger files that you're gonna take into post and have to process. And what that means is that I have a lot of those photos that are still sitting on hard drives and have not been processed because it's just more time. It's a hurdle that I put in the way of me going and taking photos and then having photos to look at and share with, with my friends and family. And any hurdles to your workflow should be removed if you can. And this thing, I think that embracing the imperfections of like a film simulation where yes, the highlights might be a little blown out or maybe the shadows are crushed, but the image is so cool. The moment is so cool that you captured that it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done. I have plenty of pros and cons for this camera for the future review on this camera, but man, those photos from that trip, I love them and they're done. It took me like three hours to get him home. I brought him into Lightroom. I did a couple little tweaks, which I'll talk about in the video on this camera. A couple little tweaks and then I was done. A six day trip and three hours of post time. 
that hasn't happened to me ever. And again, those 600 images are better than if I would spent the entire trip focusing on video and it would have ended up with one 10 minute video that I might've watched a couple of times. Like always though, I want to hear your thoughts. Photo versus video guys, what do you think? I, for me, and my future travels now, I will be focused primarily on photo and, and video here and there. I mean, any thoughts? See ya. Mm -hmm.